Mr. Reed, a Republican, is an actor, small businessman, and rancher, born and raised in the San Fernando Valley. Thank you very much for being here. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This election is not about Congressman Sherman or Berman, Republican or Democrat, Jewish or not Jewish. It's about you versus the status quo. It's about the failed policies of the last 30 years. It's about a $15 trillion debt that's tying our hands behind our back in foreign policy and destroying our ability to compete in the global economy. It's about a Muslim uprising in the Middle East that's threatening the very existence of Israel. It's about a nuclear Iran that has vowed to destroy Israel. It's about our global economy and how it relates to our national security. Locally, it's about double-digit unemployment it's about 80,000 home foreclosures. It's about one out of every three mom and pop stores closing their doors. It's about several top tier companies leaving the valley and not coming back. It's about our senior citizens' quality of life and their security. It's about our youth and the lack of opportunities if we keep on these failed policies of the last 30 years of which both of these men have participated in creating. These two men will try to convince you that they're both proven leaders, might I remind you that General Custer was a, considered a leader by the men who followed him to their deaths. This election is about you and the future of this great nation. Regardless of who you vote for, make sure that they're willing to follow your lead and not their party's lead. Thank you. Do you agree with the way the Obama administration has handled uh, Iran's nuclear program? And finally, um, should the United States caution Israel against launching a strike against Iran? The reason why Israel has to think of taking military action is because the United States has been incredibly slow to apply severe economic sanctions and still doesn't do so today. The focus of our strategy should be to impose and continue to impose the toughest possible game-changing sanctions on the Iranian regime. The truth of it is, ever since Jimmy Carter's days, the administrations have failed to project strength in the Middle East. Sanctions haven't worked. They have discussed that they have not worked. I've listened to both of these individuals feel a stronger stance in regards to Iran ever since this election has come about because they know that the focus of the Middle East is one of their weak points. The reality of it is, is Iran and Israel are backed up in a corner, and we need to actually have crippling sanctions. However, Barack Obama asked Howard Berman to actually water them down, but when this election came about, he refused to do it. Brad Sherman was requested by myself to denounce the Palestinian Authority's resolution for state recognition. He refused to do it. He refused to denounce the, the DNC's endorsement of anti-Israel organizations. Is there daylight between the administration and Israel, between the United States and Israel, when it comes to how they perceive the reality and the imminence of the Iranian nuclear threat? I think that they're not really focusing on the, the reality of it is. And the, the reality of the fact that Iran has declared Israel that they want to annihilate it. And they've been working on that for 30 years. All of the sanctions that have been put in place in 76 have not worked. They're focused on it. We go through five-year president or four-year presidential cycles. They wait out, wait it out, wait it out. This is why the sanctions are not working. Iran wants to destroy Israel. They deny the Holocaust. They deny Israel's rights to exist. They support Hamas, Hezbollah, and every terrorist organization to, to disrupt Israel. So the, the daylight that is there is just a, a blind denial and an appeasement of this administration of the Middle, of the Middle East, of Syria, Lebanon, Egypt, and the rest of the dictators in the region. Don't you think that, uh, don't you think that uh, um, Israel ought to just uh, blast Iran and take care of this? I wish it was that simple. 
However, America is the one that actually has the capacity to put together a coalition of Middle Eastern nations that actually oppose Iran having a nuclear bomb. If Israel goes at it alone, Israel will then be singled out by every group there, and it'll create more problems for Israel than not. America has an obligation as the world's superpower to take the lead on this. However, if America doesn't do that, then I am in support of Israel actually taking out the nuclear facilities. Thank you. At the last time that the uh, candidates convened, you said that the war in Iraq was a mistake. And uh, earlier this week, I heard that the United Nations sent a group of nuclear inspectors to go see what the situation in Iran actually is and what they could determine. And I couldn't help but have this weird, vague sense of deja vu. What, what are you doing to make sure that 10 years from now, you're not addressing another group of voters and saying to them, well, that war in Iran was a mistake? I believe in the law and it's been the law since the mid-90s, and that is secondary sanctions. That if a corporation is doing the wrong things with regard to Iran, that we limit their ability to business in the United States. By threatening to do that, we can get corporations to do the right thing. It's one thing when a candidate distorts your record, but it's another thing when a candidate knows that his distortion is not true. I would never accept the Security Council, or even the Europeans as the bottom line on, uh, on what sanctions should be applied, and for him to invert the truth is, is crap. Mr. Berman has uh, given many addresses where he says that he delayed the passage of the Sasada legislation in coordination with the Obama administration. That should have been law. We should have had those sanctions in 2007. These individuals, 30 years of policies, have failed. The sanctions have failed. We're listening to them argue back and forth who proposed the best piece of legislation that has failed because Iran is getting the bomb. Iran has actually told Israel, we're going to wipe you off the map. They just keep buying time. I don't care how much they say what they've done five years, ten years ago, it has not worked. Iran is intent on getting the bomb and taking Israel off the face of the map. President Obama has made clear his commitment to a two-state solution for the Israeli-Palestinian conflict, and both Democrats of this debate have supported talks towards this end. Um, at this point in time, do you agree with that? And um, do you think Congress should take steps to encourage both sides to return to negotiations? As the Prime Minister stated in one of his glorious talks, is that if the Palestinians put down their arms, there would be peace. And if Israel put down their arms, there would be no more Israel. We are not the all two individuals to tell Israel what to do in any circumstance. I look at it as like a respectful marriage between a husband and wife. You have a disagreement, you don't talk about it in the public. We can talk with the prime minister behind the scenes and tell him what we will support and what we won't support. But Obama's administration coming out publicly and telling them to go back to the 67 borders Telling them that the settlements are wrong and they need to roll them back is utterly disrespectful to a country that walks side by side. <laughs> the, com the complete silence of these two individuals pertaining to Barack Obama's complete disrespect of Israel in the last three years has been shocking. <laughs> the fact that the lack of strength projected by this administration and past administrations in the Middle East is creating the issues that we have now. Going back to UNICEF and the letter, it's a dollar late, a dollar short and a day late. I asked Brad Sherman, do you denounce the Palestinian Authority's resolution to the UN for statehood? He refused to denounce it. Now it comes up later and after the fact. It's too late. That's what I've said about these individuals and their policies. On Sunday, Republican Senators John McCain and Lindsey Graham advocated arming the rebels in Syria who are trying to topple Syrian President Bashar al-Assad. Over 5,000 Syrians have been killed in the last 11 months by Assad's government. Would you support arming the rebels in Syria? 
I listened to Brad Sherman's, you know, discussion about the Constitution and pertaining to the War Powers Act and so forth. I think there's something in the Constitution that also talks about the forbidding the United States to nation build in other countries. The military experts have not identified the combatants in Syria, so they have no clue who to arm. In Libya, it was an actual catastrophic failure because there was over 1,500 surface-to-air missiles that are not accounted for. We still don't know where they're at. Can they be smuggled into America? Can we get planes hit in New York, in Los Angeles, San Francisco, San Diego? We have no clue where a lot of these arms went to. As pertaining to arming other countries, we do not know who we're arming, and it has been proven that we actually stood on the side unknowingly with Al-Qaeda, the Taliban, the Muslim Brotherhood, and people who are actually vehemently against the United States.